Welcome to the Scandinavian Mind Podcast, our weekly show about the intersection of lifestyle and technology. Today on the program, how artificial intelligence will change the creative industries. AI is on everyone's lips right now, and we are going to take a look at some specific projects and phenomena that will and is already affecting fashion, design, art, and more. We will talk about how AI will help us with focus, relaxation, and creativity, how a new generation of AI designers are upending fashion, how we are using AI to produce our next issue, and can AI run an entire fashion business? I'm Conrad Olsen, Editor-in-Chief and Founder of Scandinavian Mind, and I'm here with my dear colleagues Erik Sedin and back on the show, Roland Philipp Kretschmar. How are you guys? Good morning. I'm excited. That intro was uh, so mouthful. I just want to talk about everything you said. <laughs> we have so much to talk about. Uh, just to say welcome back to Roland, the uh, first part of the year. How's everything? Oh, it's great. So, ha- have been looking forward to um, to this conversation this week. Um, also meeting you guys. How are you, Conrad? Very, yeah, very How's, uh, busy entrepreneurship? right now with many different projects, but uh, <laughs> I can't blame anyone else but myself. All right, let's get into it. Our Slack channel has been, you know, uh, vibrant with different examples this week, and uh, uh, perhaps we have too much to talk about. We'll see. But so basically, everyone is talking about AI right now. At least if you're listening to uh, the the newsletters I'm I'm receiving, the articles on uh, the magazines and newspapers we are reading, it feels like people are sick of metaverse and Web three, like everyone talked about last year. Now everyone's talking about AI again. Again, um, I think that's the point, Conrad. <laughs> exactly. Again. Yeah. You can't yeah. spell again without AI. <laughs> Of course, I'm generalizing here, but we ta- we ended last year's podcast uh, season uh, of talking about uh, Chat GPT and uh, uh, Dolly, and there are a number of uh, new tools out there on the market that has everyone spinning. So I thought it would be a good idea to look at how AI can and will change the industries that we cover. And there's a uh, an example that you brought up, Roland, that we're going to start with, which kind of <laughs> maybe is all encompassing in a way. Uh, can AI run an entire fashion brand? There's a mm. new service out called Kala. Can you set this up for us and we'll start the discussion? Yeah, I, <laughs> I'll see if I, how, how I can explain this. So, because as you say, they are doing everything. Uh, but basically Kala, uh, I mean, the way they explain it is uh, they, they call it an operating system for fashion. Mm. So they basically offer an AI powered a system scalable platform where you can do product design. So basically you can design your products, you can do fabric research, get market analysis with then AI supported um, engine kind of in the background, helping you to, you know, pick the best designs, the best fabric, etc. But it also then supports you. I mean, it goes beyond design and this is what makes it interesting. It supports you with production management, So basically taking your designs to life. Um, It can help you to create a web presence, uh, set up the whole e-commerce ecosystem. uh, (laughs) And actually, it can also support you with financial advice and um, tools to kind of run your company. Uh, So it's hard to kind of summarize quickly uh, what what Kayla does, but I, I think from my point of view, what's the most interesting part is that it actually takes design to production to supply chain to commerce mm. in 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 a, in in a seemingly easy way. Um, so I mean, it, it's a bit mind blowing to be honest. <laughs> I, I I agree. I mean, if if someone would have told me this, there was an app for this just uh, a year ago. I would have thought it was uh, some kind of future vision or uh, a joke of some kind of how you know robots will take over the fashion industry. But I think it's a great example because it encompasses, I think, at least two ways we are going to talk about AI today. One is creativity, mm. generating design and so forth. And there are, the other is kind of the administrative, more sort of mundane tasks that we associate AI with before. 
uh, something that you, you can learn with numbers and, and so forth. Exactly. And this is what Kayla then combines, right? Um, so, I mean, they, they do offer quite advanced design um, kind of uh, solutions, uh, you know, how to, you know, drag and drop, uh, you know, images, sketches, make the whole design process super easy, um, <clears throat> contextualizing design also from, you know, to, com- co- connecting it to, to market research and data, etc. But I think then what, what kind of uh, triggered my attention was, for example, what they called an automated pricing engine. So mm. um, they, they can provide then, uh, you know, they, they have their proprietary algorithm that automatically provides optimal supply chain by considering dozens of factories in 13 countries with over 100 shipping lanes. Um, And this is in itself um, what they say, at least an industry first. So automating the whole supply chain. Uh, And if you are starting a fashion company, that is usually the biggest challenge that you will have. Yeah. Design, ideas, creativity, that's usually not the problem. It's actually <laughs> getting th- sh- things produced and shipped. I think this is interesting from two parts. I think, Conrad, you had a talk with uh, Lisa Lang <laughs> at uh, the EU. Uh, I don't know, is she a lobbyist? Could be like a fashion sustainability she's lobbyist. A, she's director of policies. She, she writes the new policy for right, uh, yeah. uh, the gre- new Green Deal from EU relating okay. to fashion. So there we yeah, go. <laughs> I, I, I interviewed her at Stockholm Fashion District yesterday, actually, on a panel talk. And I think that's interesting. I, I know um, we've interviewed her for our platform before. Uh, we might see that in the future. But speaking of how in, in fashion and EU will have a lot of rules, they have a lot of you know things that the fashion industry needs to do instantly mm. in like a year or two. Speaking of like uh, sustainability and transparency and stuff. This is, I think it's interesting from two points. Creating a fashion brand, in some ways you don't want it to follow rules. If you know what I mean, you, you don't want the trends and all the clothes that come out in a year or two to be built out of the same like pool of uh, images and trends. So it all looks the same. But you still, for these guys, if you think of them, you want them to be able to follow these rules that the EU will implement soon. So maybe like when you're starting your own brand through this platform, it will automatically follow all these business rules. Like, hey, you need to mm. be sure that it comes from this place. Uh, you can't uh, write these words and use these phrasings, blah, blah. It speaks of greenwashing. I think it's interesting. <laughs> it will be interesting to see what happens to small fashion brands if they can use these kind of platforms. Yeah, and that's a good point. And, and um, to my understanding, uh, Carla does not guarantee any kind of sustainability elements. But I, I don't know. I have not deep dived into this. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, the pricing model is if the freemium based. You know, you can start for free. Uh, then you have professional account, hundred dollars a month, <clears throat> so that's not too much actually. But then, of course, if you want the full service, uh, there's an enterprise uh, solution. I don't know. I, I guess we would have to contact Carla to understand uh, how much or not they can ensure that uh, the factories used um, and the logistics uh, companies used are then uh, environmentally friendly and sustainable. I, but it's it's a good point. All right, great example. Let's t- pivot uh, from Carla into fashion design and the more sort of traditionally creative parts uh, of of the fashion industry, which is creating the actual designs, creating the looks, creating the colors, the textures, the feels. Um, there is a lot happening with. Uh, sort of digital designers that are using AI to generate completely new uh, new designs and new creative worlds. Uh, Eric, you've been looking into uh, a project uh, by a designer called Elmo Mistian. Uh, I don't... <laughs> we might have butchered your name. Sorry about that, Elmo. What are we What are we looking at here? Yeah. So uh, shout out to our new intern Vilma Hall. She was the one who introduced this uh, Belgian designer to me. Um, first of all, I kind of want to take it back a couple of years because um, you know the idea of using AI to make up silhouettes in fashion it's definitely not new. Mm. I remember actually my first ever article that I wrote as an intern for what was then called Scandinavian Man. <laughs> that is just in 2020. It was about this subject. It was about AI fashion. So at Paris Fashion Week, Acne Studios had they turned to this AI artist called Robbie Barrett, and they made a whole runway show only using AI designs. Uh, so this uh, Robbie Barrett, he got like he got access to Acne's uh, archive of all of their styles 
put it all into this uh, machine, <laughs> not a machine, but they put it into his uh, neural network and then it pumped out like a couple of designs and they actually put it on a on a runway show at Paris Fashion Week. This uh, Robbie Barrett guy, he's been doing this for years. I have found an interview from 2018 when he did a Balenciaga mock-up show uh, mm. doing this exact thing. So it's not really new. I thought it was interesting. I found this this Vogue critic <laughs> commented on this uh, this Acne runway show and it says, on the evidence of the collection, AI is re- re- really, really poor at clothing design. <laughs> <laughs> Unless its design is to embarrass man to death, in which case it's quite brilliant. So I think that's a, that's a 2020 quote from a Vogue critic. Uh, it will be in- interesting to see how they view, you know, AI and clothing design now. And you know, it's it's quite of a valid point actually from this traditional Vogue critic. I'm assuming uh, because the AI, when creating the sign, it doesn't understand the borders in clothing. Or a bag is supposed to have a strap mm. and you should be able to fit a human arm through this hole here and zippers and pockets. It doesn't know what that is, you know. It doesn't understand what a zipper is and a pocket is. It just follows a silhouette. Anyways, this has been talked about since 2018. Yeah, but that's a, that's a great perspective you're coming with here. So only in mm. like a couple of years, I think, if we look at what Elmo is doing, he has an Instagram account called AIdesign.png. Yeah. Um, you know, the signs we are seeing there are way ahead of what we saw just two years ago or just a year ago. <laughs> I mean, it's the, it's the level of creativity incredible. is just so much higher, I think. And mm. I, I, I'm mind blown by some of the stuff that I'm seeing here um, yeah, in terms of, of visuals and, and textures and, and, and uh, uh, et cetera. Exactly. And I think this is because of two things. One thing I would say is this Elmo uh, Mistain guy from Belgium, I'm not sure if he's like a true coder and a developer like uh, Robbie Barrett was in 2018. He might be, I'm not sure. But today, if you're a fashion uh, designer, interested in fashion, you don't have to be a developer or coder because all these you know, programs like OpenAI, Midjourney, Dolly, they can make the clothes for you and they look really, really realistic. Mm. You know, So th- it's been five years in 2018. Now it's looking really good. Uh, I thought it was interesting because this um, Elmo guy from Belgium, uh, he uses a... Uh, a program from Midjourney or a branch or whatever you call it. It's called Midgan. Uh, so it's specialized in creating like scarily human-like designs. So how it works, it, it has a generator and a discriminator hmm. <laughs> that works together. So the generator creates an image, the same kind of image that Robbie Barrett and Acne did a couple of years ago. And then the discriminator looks at that image and says, hey, this doesn't look real at all. This looks terrible. This looks fake. It looks like that doesn't that doesn't look like a T-shirt does. So then the generator takes that feedback from the discriminator and improves the image back and forth, back and forth, back and mm. forth. And then it can make, you know, it can make humans, it can make skin, it can make shirts like this uh, guy, um, Elmo guy that people should check out. It looks amazing. And then it looks really, really, really good without you even having to understand coding or understanding developing because the AI does it for you. But are you saying that it's two AI systems working together? So the discriminator, is that an AI as well or is that human, uh, you know, made somehow? Yeah, it's, there's both two AI uh, brains working together in mid-journey. So mid-gan, <laughs> it's it's called. Yeah. Uh, it's a discriminator and a generator. I don't know, it sounds quite funny. It could be like the new alien versus predator. How they're like <laughs> beefing it out. Uh, yeah, but that's just the, what, speaking of what you talked about before, how you can create a fashion brand, uh, these AI are not that good at like creating like pockets and zippers and actually understanding what a silhouette is supposed to look like. We need a human touch for that. But just imagine what these, you know, if you're at a fashion college and you don't know, you're supposed to create 10 designs for a, for a collection. Mm. But isn't this all about, isn't this all about prompts basically? I mean, <clears throat> that if, if you say, um, if you input that you need to, bring and wear a, a, a cell phone or a, I mean not self smartphone or a wallet or keys wouldn't then the design kind of adjust to that so isn't that just up to Probably. us to give give the engine the right prompts exactly that's yeah. what it's come to uh, yeah. before uh, like like I said in 2018 2020 when they first started experimenting with this it would just take 10,000 images, blend them together, and yeah. it would look like ghosts, like mm. they were wearing like drapes mm. or togas, kind of. If you can tell, you can tell the, the prompt, you can probably say like, I want a bag with uh, that, that can hold a, uh, a phone or a, a mm. wallet. It could probably understand like, okay, it needs to have the opening, it needs to have a strap, it needs to 
fit on the side of the body. Mm. Or and it just comes up with a totally different solution that we have never thought about. <laughs> yeah. well, I think this so. is, of course, uh, we can talk forever about an existential crisis for or existential <laughs> situation for creators. Uh, where does the you know human creation begin and where does tools take over? I mean, you can argue that art or fashion or any creative pursuit always has used tools where you know, the creator has a prompt, they have, they have an idea, they use different tools to see uh, the mm. outcome. Uh, I mean, that's what a, you know, paintbrush is, you know, back in the, the Renaissance days, you could argue. So uh, you still need that prompt, you still need that yeah. initial mm -hmm. spark uh, um, to to create the thing. I mean, there are, there are more examples uh, on the market. There are several of these sort of Instagram accounts. There's one called AI Clothing Daily, which is really fun to look at to see a new concepts coming out. Uh, there's also a project from, uh, you know, more of, of the mainstream uh, part of fashion. There was a, a project from Jack Mew and, and Nike collaboration mm -hmm. that came out just uh, just before New Year's, which was a kind of a ski collection created by the footwear designer uh, Marco Simonetti. Um, he has co-founded a collective called Rawl 7000 Studio. Um and all of the clothing here, obviously, they're they're only digital. Uh, they're digital only, uh, mm. but the imagery is just you know you know staggering. And you see traces of both brands in these images: uh, Jack Mew, uh, the, the 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 French fashion brand, and the the Nike, the, the sportswear brand. Um, so I mean, what what art articles are saying and what headlines are saying? I guess we are doing the same thing. Is like. AI is taking over. AI are designing these things, but what most people, I feel like, you know, uh, you know, the the reasonable take on this is that this is just another tool. It's a mind blowing tool because it generates so much new imagery in so uh, short of a time. But it is just a tool. How do you see this, Roland? You, you've 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 uh, looked at this from the art perspective, also. No, I totally agree. Um, however. I believe that within the next, I can't predict the future, but let's say five years, mm. it's going to fundamentally change uh, in the way that these uh, tools, as you call them, or systems or platforms or engines or whatever you want to call them, uh, will have the ability to create the prompt. Like you, you talk about uh, the creator and the disruptor. Now, what was the name, Eric? <laughs> the, two, uh... <laughs> the creator and the disruptor. Yeah, it's yeah. the generator and the discriminator. Yeah, the generator and the <laughs> discriminator. I, I think that in itself was it was very interesting to listen to because I I, I believe that it, it we're just like an instant away from having these systems um, kind of taking over also the ideation part. Mm -hmm. Um and I, you know, I don't mind. I don't feel threatened. I think again, the role of the human in this uh, kind of ecosystem is to kind of curate, uh, not control, but curate and and and, and adjust and, and 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 kind of add another flavor, another element to it. Uh, but you know, I, I think we we talk about the creator economy, right? That has been kind of um, the buzz for the last uh, five years, at least. Uh, but I think maybe we're moving from crea creation to curation much faster. Right. Well, speaking about feeling threatened, there are several articles out there right now of, you know, uh, basically uh, creators, uh, artists, uh, specifically in the kind of, I think mostly in the kind of illustrator community, because mm. I think illustrator community are the ones that, you know, the AI is best at creating uh, stuff that an illustrator would do or someone who cre already does stuff in a computer uh, environment. And basically the argument is to, to do it in short, the AI is not producing this out of a void. They are using millions and billions of data points, meaning previously produced imagery and mm. concept and so forth. They, that's the kind of raw material here. Uh, so the discussion is around, is it fair that the AI is using uh, something that other creators have, have, have created themselves and doing interpretations of them? Mm. You know, personally, I think that argument is it doesn't really hold up because that's what kind of art and creativity has been doing for forever. You know, everything new is created out of something old. 
but it it poses an interesting dis- discussion around you know where 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 does you know the the human element end in this what do you think i i, I don't know what i think to be honest um i'm going <laughs> to comment on it from another angle mm. so in the last two months there's been all this hype around gtp3 and uh, you know, basically, I mean, the, you know, it, it, how how would you summarize it? Is is kind of a, a text uh, a, a synthesizing a tool that helps you to to you know create uh, new text. But the interesting part is that, according at least to my understanding, GPT three only takes uh, uh, has only um, data input. From uh, uh, from the internet uh, up until 2021, so yeah. all events after 2021 is not currently included in in the database of GBT GT GBT three. Uh, now I don't know if that's uh, true or not, but that's interesting in itself. Yeah, that the the answers you get from this this tool at the moment is is very limited, right? It, but I, I think it's extremely interesting as kind of, um, you know, a sparring partner or to very quickly uh, analyze text or rewrite text, etc. But I think in the next generation with GBT4 that will come out um, anytime soon, uh, that could be, you know, next month or in three years, we don't know yet. But GBT4 will have... 100 trillion parameters, mm. which is 500 times more than GBT3. <laughs> that means, uh, I read somewhere, that from one prompt, GBT4 can write a book of 60,000 uh, words. <laughs> So that is that. That's gonna be uh, game changing, I think. Well, let's let's pivot from there and talk a little bit about media production because this is obviously <laughs> close scary. to our hearts, and Jesus. you know it it relates to a seven, you know a few of the things that that um, we've talked about already. So, can some of these AI systems start working together? Because now we're seeing that they're doing ki- mm. kind of limit. They're limited tasks. So. What we're seeing is we have uh, uh, tools that are generating text. We are tools that are generating voiceovers. We are tools that are editing video, for example. But these are individual tools. And mm. so if you want to make a, a, you can make a, a completely new uh, voiceover infographics movie from scratch with just basically one prompt. If you move kind of, the, you, you create the, the script in ChatGPT, you go to a video editor to do the movie, and then you go to a voiceover to do the voiceover and just upload it on YouTube. Uh, but there's no one tool that does this seamlessly. Uh, but Eric, can you talk a little bit about how you are using AI to do research and, and plan for the next issue? I, maybe we'll start there. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was scary what you said there. Uh, one prompt can create a book of 60,000 pages. Uh, it scares me a bit, I guess, for if we spoke, well, if we speak about for artists or fashion designers, they're also scared. Uh, but like you said there, 60,000 for me, when I'm doing research for this um, issue four that we're creating, and right now I'm doing this, uh, I'm creating this list of like the most interesting and forward-thinking virtual creatives in the Nordics. So they could be gamers, TikTokers, artists, fashion designers, you know, anything. I <laughs> it could be quite uh, tedious and like it takes a lot of time to make ten to fifteen questions for all these people that I'm going to interview. And I have to kind of, you know, change the questions up a bit for a gamer can't really answer the same questions that a fashion designer could, for example. So I've turned to ChatGPT a couple of times, actually. What I'm realizing now and what I'm hoping that the, the discriminator can come in and help me in the future is that I think it's all about quantity now. It's not mm. so much about quality. Mm. I'm asking the question. I'm like, hey, I'm going to I'm going to interview this uh, NFT artist. I want to a- ask him about how, yeah, give me 10 questions about w- for an interview. And I would say out of these 10 questions, I would say like six or seven are basically asking the same question, but put in a different wording. Yeah, right. That's what I would say. Uh, and three of the questions are brilliant. I steal them like without hesitation. I take them, I make them mine, and then I qu- might tweak them a little bit. But I would say 
like I don't know. It's almost like it's quantity right now. I'm not sure what it will be like for uh, GPT four uh, that you talked about, but right now I would say that it's mostly quantity. People are blown away by it. I think it's quite cool myself. People tell me all the time, "Oh, you're a journalist. You're a writer. You're a reporter. They're gonna take your jobs." And as I'm trying this chat GPT, I'm like, ah, it's good. It can it can write a lot, but you could probably like make it half as long. Yeah. But Eric, there's another element. It's the generic part. So yeah, of course. It, it, of course. It, it's not personal. It doesn't feel like there's... Uh, you, you'd say quality, I totally agree. <clears throat> but uh, there's also this element of... Um, I mean, if you dig deeper into the quality element, like there's no let's say real connection to 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 the to, to what i what i do how i think how i produce how i uh, write right uh, and and i think that in itself is the missing part at the moment if we talk about chat gbt specifically uh, that might come anytime soon as well right they're launching the pro account soon maybe then you can start to tailor it to your needs but i think what i would like because i've used it quite extensively in the past couple of months but it doesn't learn from me. No. Right? I, it's still very generic in every answer. It doesn't, it's like not th- three months later, there's no change in the, uh, in, in the output I get. It, does like, it's not, it doesn't feel more Roland three months there later. There actually is an app for that that I saw. There's an app called personal.ai, I think, mm. uh, where it, basically solving what we're talking about here. I mean, um, I think the the, um, the long term concept is Jarvis, right? In in, mm-hmm. in the uh, Iron Man movie, so uh, you know Iron Man has he has a personal AI that knows everything about him, knows its mm. tastes and where you know how he wants to design his robots and and so forth. So I think what we're talking about here is is and I know this personal AI. I haven't looked into it in detail, but the 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 the, the, um, the premise of it was that you. <laughs> this sounds really. <laughs> Uh, dystopian in a way you kind of upload all your communication or you get have this uh, app get access to all your communication <laughs> so for instance if um, i would upload my entire email uh, uh backlog or everything i've ever written which doesn't you know which it could be reasonable uh you know we're we are all writers so our sort of backlog is in text so maybe an ai can then understand what my personal preference is what is my je ne sais quoi when it comes to making editorial decisions? How does mm. Conrad want a headline to be made? How does Conrad want uh, the cover of the magazine to look like? If we can upload our tastes into the AI and have all these tools generate output from it, maybe then we can have something where we could also sort of uh, we have the curator uploaded in the AI. And, but can you know, I ask you then, yeah. I mean, isn't this at the end then a question of trust? Like, which company do you trust yes. the most? So, because, I mean, if I think quickly about this, I would trust Google, for example, mm. or Alphabet, you know. Uh, I've been using them for 15 years. They know me better than my wife, probably. And, um, you know, I would trust Google to support me with this, but I would not support this personal AI. <laughs> right? No, I have no idea who does that. <laughs> so, <laughs> super fascinating. Um, we could talk about this forever. Uh, obviously, this uh, this has already sparked uh, themes for upcoming episodes. Maybe we can end on a more, I don't know, mindful note. Mm. Uh, Roland, you've been trying out another service called Endel. <laughs> Um, uh, what has this done for your state of mind? Okay, so if we all just take a moment of silence. This is the whole point with all these mindfulness tools that, you know, we are surrounded by noise um, that really is uh, fucking with our brains, to be honest. Uh, but mindfulness itself is not the answer, according to Endel. <laughs> so this is interesting, right? Uh, I actually need to quote uh, Marshall McLuhan, a, a very famous uh, media uh, theorist uh, from the 60s and 70s. The medium is the message. Yes, exactly. So in 1968, he wrote, when forcing the new media to do work of the old, we're witnessing a clash of cataclysmic proportions between two great technologies. We approach the new with the psychological conditioning and sensory responses to the old. 
and this from this um Endel has built uh, an app um, uh, platform, a solution that supports us um, to become more mindful, but also smarter. Um, it's basically adapting uh, the sound output that you get uh, through the app to the bodies, the brains, uh, to how we feel, how you know how much or not we sleep. Uh, so it it connects uh, to you know you can connect it to to Apple Health and 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 if you want or Aura if you want, mm -hmm. but basically um, it gives you this endless uh, output of of sound that can elevate you, make you more relaxed, make you more focused, or get better sleep. Um, so it's basically these personalized soundscapes. And there is this uh, quite complex AI uh, at the, in the background, obviously, um, that then analyzes your every move and behavior and adjusts this also to um, the circadian uh, kind of rhythm of the day. Okay. So if, if it's, uh, for example, now in Stockholm, as we record this, the sun just came out. It then will change the soundscape because the sun came out, or if it's cloudy, it will change according to that. Or if if it if so, it, it's very interesting. And you know, I've used a lot of these different um, mindfulness tools. Uh, you can use it, of course, to kind of as a support tool for meditation, etc. But this is something else. Mm. I, it's it's hard actually to explain it um, because it, just imagine that you would have this constant this constant soundscape in the background that would s elevate you or take you down or you know it, it's kind of interesting can i ask how you listen to it do you always have uh, uh headphones or do you have a speaker in your room or you work yeah or? so this is um i mean i'm not i i guess you know i'm testing this out f I've, i've done it for a week i signed up for a three month test mm. you know but I guess ultimately it's aimed for um, people that have headphones on all the time. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, I'm not one of those. I like like proper silence as well. Um, but I mean, I've used it without headphones. It works well. You know, I connect it to my home device or, you know, but I, to my experience, it works best for me for as a sleeping aid. Right. For self hypnosis, which I use extensively, I've used for the past ten years now. You know, you you basically use self hypnosis to relax or you know fall asleep or to you know for you, there are many ways you can <laughs> use self hypnosis. Um, but yeah, it's 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 kind of interesting. I I I, but do you, I hear do you, myself you sound a bit it, it blurry. Actually. Yeah. Uh adapts to you <clears throat> do you have a sense yeah. that the sound is actually adapting to where you are and, and what your needs are right now yes wow that's fascinating yeah so that this is um i guess what makes it stand out from other solutions as well yeah uh but having said that it doesn't adjust endlessly Oh. So it has, let's say, in the app, you, you, you have, you know, 10, 10, 20, 30 different kind of basic soundscapes. Uh, and it, it kind of goes back and forth between these soundscapes. But I think the next level would be that it, 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 it also kind of um, adjusts it within a soundscape. So mm. within a relaxed soundscape, it would adjust then the sound output according to my needs. Fast. That I have not yet experienced, but I, I guess that's not uh, too far away from. Well, it kind of goes, if to connect it a little bit, try to make it sort of editorial here, it goes back to what we just talked about. So can the AI learn about us? So can the AI understand mm. us better and help us with our own output? And this is a kind of a different take on it, but I guess that if you would use this uh, over a longer period of time, you would kind of get uh, addicted to it because... You know, is is this perhaps better than your spouse, your wife, or your husband? This mm. thing can can read your uh, state of mind and provide you with what you need. Uh, and I guess that's that's something we all we're all we're all striving for, right? Yes, and 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 this is 
this is a great ending maybe to today's episode actually because Endel they themselves claim that they are a tech aided bodily function. Oh yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I think this is super interesting because I mean I have a chip in you know implanted in my in my um, <clears throat> hand that I never use that technically makes me a cyborg, right? We all have mm. smartphones in our pockets for the past 15 years. Um, that doesn't make us cyborgs, but it makes us, you know, interconnected with technology. Mm. But I think this is really the future, like you know, where tech really enhances humanity to be smarter, faster, greater, sleep better, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? Uh, and I think we should stop to fight against it. <laughs> really, you know, we should just. Let go and see where it leads us as a species. Well, that's a great way to end the episode. Perhaps uh, a lot of people are scared of the uh, evolution. A lot of people are excited. Uh, I think we are in in some measures both here at Scandinavian Mind. Uh, Guys, thank you so much for sharing these insights. Uh, Just to end with a reminder that we are at SIF in Copenhagen next week hosting three days of panel talks at uh, uh, the Copenhagen International Fashion Fairs. Uh, go into scanningmind.com to learn more about our talks uh, in, during Copenhagen Fashion Week. And don't forget to sign up to our newsletter. Visit scanningmind.com slash newsletter. A newsletter that from next week will be written completely by AI. Or will it? What do you think? Yeah, 90% of it will. I'll probably like uh, add some punctuation or something. That's okay, it. Eric, start looking for a new job. So, Eric, I'm is your salary ninety percent lower from next week? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, guys. Exactly. Until next week. Take care. Bye. Bye.